Hurricane Beryl to begin affecting Jamaica before daybreak. The Meteorological Service of Jamaica says the outer bands of Hurricane Beryl will reach Jamaica before daybreak Wednesday, beginning with sections of eastern and north central parishes. It says this will gradually spread across the island as the center moves closer to the coast and will be accompanied by periods of strong winds, gradually increasing to hurricane force during the morning. Dangerous storm surges and battling waves will also be generated mainly along coastal area of eastern and north central parishes. The center of the hurricane is expected to move very near or over the island's southeastern coastline tomorrow afternoon. Bella remains a category 4 hurricane and currently has maximum sustained winds as near as 250 km per hour with higher gush. Weekend is forecast during the next day or two, however, Beryl is forecast to be at or near major hurricane intensity while it passes near Jamaica on Wednesday and the Cayman Islands on Wednesday night. Hurricane Force winds extend outward up to 65 km from the center and tropical storm force winds extended outward up to 295 km. Jamaicans to get free toll access from 6 p.m. to midnight. Transport Minister Darrell Valls says he is able to sign a ministerial order under the Toll Authority to allow for free access of highway east-west and north-south between 6 p.m. and midnight on Tuesday. Voss expressed that the decision comes amid congested roadways as Jamaicans try to get final preparations done before Hurricane Beryl makes landfall on Wednesday. This is to allow people to move around, make last-minute arrangements especially with the roads as congested as they are. We want persons to access the highway to get home earlier and safer to prepare for the impending hurricane, he stated. Jamaica is expected to take a direct hit as very near the island as a strong Category 4 hurricane. JPS dismisses fake news about system shutdown. The Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, is dismissing as fake news claims about the national grid being shut down due to impending arrival of Hurricane Beryl. The company has no such intention, declared Director of Corporate Communications at JPS Winsome Column. The system will remain operational for as long as it is feasible to do so, she emphasized. The Light and Power Company is urging members of the public to check the official JPS communication channel for credible information. Meanwhile, JPS is reminding the public that once the weather system has passed, depending on the severity, persons may experience outages for up to several weeks. Restoration activities will commence after the company's poor delivery infrastructure has been assessed for readiness. Essential services will be first in line, followed by major industrial zones and urban centers. Small communities and individuals will be restored after the above groups. This is a time to remain calm, focus and properly be informed while we care for each other, stated Callum. Police were prepared for frontline duties during storm, JCF stated. The Jamaica Constable Force, JCF, says it has prepared extensively and is ready to face the challenges ahead of Hurricane Beryl continues its trajectory parts toward Jamaica. In a release on Tuesday, Police Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake said the JCF Incident Command Centers are said to be activated as the force gets ready to be on the front lines. Outline the sacrifice law enforcers will have to make in the coming days, Commissioner Blake said their duty to protect and serve does not go unnoticed. The days ahead will be demanding. Many of you will have to leave the safety and comfort of your homes and the embrace of your loved ones onto the front lines, he stated. Make proper provision at home for your loved ones even as you prepare to go out and serve others. With that said, Commissioner Blake highlighted the profound impact of the actions of the JCF members will have on the community during the hurricane. Your presence, your vigilance, and your readiness will provide the reassurance and security that our fellow Jamaicans need in these trying times. You and other first responders are the pillars of strength that we will lean on, he stated. Expressing confidence in the ability of his officers, Commissioner Blake rallied the force with a message of unity and strength. I am confident in your abilities and your resolve. The people of Jamaica are counting on you, and I know we will rise to the occasion as we have time and time again, he said. Let's stand together, unite and strong, and show the country the true spirit of the JCF. Trelawney man charged burglary after turning himself in. A construction worker of Granville Trelawney address was charged with burglary after he turned himself into the police on Sunday. 
charged its 28-year old Shan Finley. Reports are that on June 27, between the hours of 12 a.m. and 4 a.m., a woman woke up after hearing footsteps in her house in Rock District, Falmont. The woman reported went to investigate and saw Finley in the bathroom. He then escaped through the bathroom window. The matter was reported to the police. Finley turned himself in and the charge was laid against him. A court date is being arranged for him. Man accused of breaking into a house stealing $2,000. A man who reported he broke into a house in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, assaulted a woman and then escaped with $2,000, has been charged in relation to the incident. The accused has been identified as 26-year-old Fernando Chang of Cave District, who fills in the parish. Chang is charged with housebreaking, larceny, and assault occasioning bodily harm. Reports are that about 1.50 p.m., a woman was at her home when she heard strange noise coming from outside. The woman went to investigate and reportedly saw Chang entering through her kitchen window. It is further alleged that upon entering the home, Chang physically assaulted the woman, stole $2,000 and then escaped. The incident is said to have occurred on Thursday, May 16. A report was later made to the police and Chang was arrested on Saturday, June 29. He was subsequently charged and is awaiting a court date. Saving Elaine Livingston Smith The picture accompanying the GoFundMe account set up for the renowned public relations and business communicator Elaine Livingston Smith showing her frail frog frame lying in a hospital bed with an oxygen mask over her face sparkly depicts how gravely ill she is and her family is in desperate need to save her life. Livingston Smith is ailing from a rare non-cancerous brain tumor of the central nervous system and is in need of urgent brain surgery overseas, an expense which is beyond the reach of her family. In a bid to raise the required fund, her children, Nalena and Akeem Smith, have launched a GoFundMe account titled Fund Elaine's Life Saving Surgery. The fund has so far reached just US $21,000 of US $200,000 from 213 donors. Livingston Smith's husband, Patrick Smith, explained in the writing, on the GoFundMe page that his wife has been hospitalized at the University Hospital of the West Indies for at least a month now. To save her life, she needs specialized neurosurgery called skull base surgery. This type of surgery is not available in Jamaica. Dr. Robert Strzok at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, USA, has decided to take her case after examining her MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, he stated. He noted that Dr. Park will work with a team of specialists either at the University of Miami Skull Base Center or Jackson Memorial Skull Base Center. We have not received a quote from the doctor's fee yet, but the hospital fee is US $77,410, and they require this money to be paid up front 24 to 48 hours before admission. I think the fee for the theme of doctors will be a similar amount, if not more, he stated. In addition, he noted that Livingston Smith needs an air ambulance costing of at least US $25,000, to take her to Jackson Memorial, which is not covered by insurance. Elaine has held insurance with Sajakor, but they will not pay up front, only by way of reimbursement, and we cannot find this money up front. Therefore, I am appealing for help so that Elaine gets a fighting chance to life, Simit stated. According to Cleveland Clinic, a non-profit multi-specialist academic medical center that integrates clinical and hospital care with research and education, this type of disease developed near the pulmonary glands. It is slow growing tumor that can affect the cranial nerve, which are responsible for vision, and the endocrine system, which is responsible for the hormonal function of the body. A University of the West Indies graduate, Livingston Smith, is known for her expertise in conceptualizing, developing, and managing public relations, marketing, and communication development programs for clients for the public, private, and non governmental sector of Jamaica. Among her notable stint as a communication professional, was her 12-year tenure as communication specialist at General Alumna Jamaica, Jamaica from May 2005 to February 2018. She also served as public relations consultant, communicators group limited for eight years from April 1995 to November 2003. Livingston Smith was also a corporate public relations officer at the National Water Commission from 1988 to 1993. She worked with the Jamaica Information Service between 1980 and 1998 serving as a senior editor in the radio department, then news editor in the television department. She also served for 10 years as chairperson for the San Maritan Center from January 1999 to December 2008. 
This is a community outreach program serving children, youth, and unemployed adults in downtown Kingston. Livingston Smith lectured part-time in public relations at UWI Mona from 1999 to 2005, an assistant public relations officer there from 2003 to 2004. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.